Hello everybody, Crips here, and yeah, welcome. So, what are we doing? We're doing screen capture. Ooh, so I've been getting a lot of emails asking me when I'm going to do a tutorial on the screen capture. So, stop sending me the emails, I'll do it, damn it. All right, so version 6 screen capture is, in my opinion, way better than version 5. Reason being is it gives you more options in the frame rate. And why is that important? Well, depending on what you're capturing, frame rate can be very, very important. If I'm doing video games, I don't want a high frame rate because most likely I'm going to play the video games for a long period. And if the frame rate is high, the output file or the, 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 the video file would be very high in memory. So I might end up, up trying to upload a gigabyte video and I'd rather not do that. So... Uh, if I'm doing a video tutorial like I'm going to do now, I might use a frame rate of 15 or 25. So, uh, I'm sorry, 25 or 30, sorry. Because uh, I want to be a little more sharp, and a little bit more crisp. Especially if there's lettering or wording on uh, the tutorial. Like here, I've got the distort clip. If it's not clear, and I'm telling people to go to distort clip, they may not see it, and then they're going to get confused. All right, so that's why frame rate is important. All right, so let's get cracking. So you launch your video studio and you're going to hear into your capture options. Now just, uh, just to let you know, because I'm using screen capture, if I press the screen capture button, you won't see anything because it can't capture itself. So what I did was I just took some photos of it and I'll show you what happens after you click it. So I'm going to use Photoshop and you're going to get greeted with this little window here, screen capture. Now to start manually, uh, you just press 11, you can pause it with F11, and you can stop it with F10. Why they did it that way, I don't know. You would think stop and start would be F10 and F11. But anyway, I didn't create it, so who knows. Uh, you got full screen here, and then if you use this drop-down menu, you can see all the applications that are open currently running on my computer. So I can just basically click on one of these and it will automatically capture that program. It'll go to that, whichever monitor I'm using, I've got two monitors, it'll go straight to that monitor and start capturing that and it will fit it in perfect size. All right, and then you might go to settings, go to settings, and then you can also change a few options here. For instance, after you finish the capture, where do you want it to go? By default, it would go into your sample library. Let's just have a look. I'm going to get rid of this here. This is your sample library. This is what came with your video studio. And as you can see, I've already done it. And they're here. Okay. So let's go back. All right. Uh, audio settings. You can then make sure your sound recorder is working. And do you want to capture the system audio? Do you want to capture the, 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 the music or anything that's coming from your computer? If you're doing video tutorials, say, on music software, you may want to capture that audio. And like I said, the frame rate, you can change it for 15, 25, and 30. Unfortunately, this is a picture, so if I click on it, nothing's going to happen, right? All right, so let's get moving. So we don't need this anymore. This is just to show you what happens after you press that fancy button. All right, All right so here I am. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick of mine. I very rarely use the zoom and pan filter. I find the crop filter much, much better. I've already applied the crop filter, so I'm going to double click, go into my attributes, and then go into customs filter. So there you go. So I've already recorded it, I've put it in my timeline, and I've just added the crop filter. Once you're here, you uncheck fill color, and it's up to you where you want to start. I would start with 100%, so it captures everything that the screen capture has captured for you. Well, it's almost a tongue twister, isn't it? It's capture, capture, capture. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a copy of my keyframe. I'm going to move my scrub along. I'm going to control V and I'm going to do control V again. I'm going to make three keyframes and I'll show you why. I'm going to take the last keyframe. I'm just going to get it right out of the way. I'm going to go back onto the second keyframe. I don't use the scrubber. I actually use the keyframe and move it along the timeline. So I'm going to watch this panel here. I don't really use the preview window much. I more prefer to stay in this window here because this one's going to zoom in. So if, if I'm working on this and my cursor moves out of the zoom, if I'm looking at the preview window, I'm lost. So stay with this window. 
and let's let's have a look at the video uh, I'm just going to drag the, the keyframe along and I can see that my cursor is heading towards the preview window so at this point I might zoom in on the preview window this is where my third keyframe comes in I'm going to bring it all the way back and I'm going to change the attributes to 50% and honestly most of the time I do zoom effects I don't use less than 50% and uh, that was pretty good. Did you like that and how I did that? <laughs> I hit enter and it disappeared. All right. So then I'm going to take my cursor and I'll turn to a point finger and I'm going to move it right onto my preview window. So now I'm zoomed in quite nicely. Now, you may ask why the two keyframes? If I go from 50, 100% from this keyframe to this keyframe, as it moves along, it goes 50, 90, 80. It zooms in and it slide and then it starts to move. I don't want that. I want that to be constant from this keyframe to this keyframe. And then from here, I want it to do all the work. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll press play. And I should really bring that to the beginning of my clip. I'm terrible today, aren't I? So there you go. It's a fairly fast clip, so that's why we're having a bit of an issue with it. But anyway. So it's going 100% all the way along, and then all of a sudden, in a very like maybe in about 10 frames, it's going to go straight to 50% and zooms right in on my preview window. I'm going to go on my last keyframe and copy that again, move my timeline along a little bit, and control V. So I've now made a copy of this one. It's the same thing again. I'm just going to move it along until I think, until I think my whatever I'm talking about in my preview window or my tutorial. Once I see my cursor go to something else, like maybe I want to go back to full screen. To go back to full screen, I'm just going to go back to the first keyframe and copy that. Copy, and then just bring my scrubber all the way back and control V. So I've got 100% again. And might keep going until whatever I want to do. I might want to zoom in here again. Control V, because I've still got the original copy of 100%. And then I might go back to this keyframe and copy that. So all I'm doing now is copying, pasting keyframes every time I want to zoom in somewhere. And I might apply it, so control V. And this time I might just go on to the uh, filters. For whatever reason, I might just do that. And I've got to copy that. And I move this along. And control V. So it's constant, it stays there. And then from after here, I don't really care what happens. All right, so as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm placing two keyframes next to each other. One's 50, one's 100, and then the backwards, it's one is 100, and then the other one's 50. And that's how I do my pan and zoom. Okay, and this will probably go relatively fast, but you'll get the idea. Bam, 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 bam. All right, now if you, as you can see in the beginning, it was very abrupt. It goes crack, crack. All right, now to change that, to make it a little bit more smooth, it's just a question of moving these keyframes further apart so the transition takes longer. All right. All right. I think that's my favorite word. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's have a look. All right. So it's, again, a little bit fast. The clip's only, you know, 30 seconds long, so don't expect much. I don't even think it's 30 seconds, to be honest. What am I looking at? One and a half seconds. <laughs> it's, well, there you go. No wonder it's going to move silly fast, right? So... Using the crop filter is how I create my pan and zoom. If you want the transition to be smooth, place the two uh, keyframes further apart. If you want to be abrupt and sharp, then yeah, place them closer together. And that, my friend, is how I do my pan and zoom using the screen capture. And as always, thanks for joining.